Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2KDev. Now in this video we're going to be going over the basics of Swift. Uh, in the previous video we started with variables, uh, string interpolation, and just the basics of you know how you would do some string concatenation and things like that. In this video we're going to be doing arrays and probably for loops just to get you guys into the basics of how you would um, store some, some useful data and then loop through that data. So to create an array inside of Swift, you basically do this, it's just another type of variable and it's going to be var, we're just going to say something like uh, teams equals, and then we use these square brackets. Now these square brackets in most languages represent an array, so if you're familiar with something like C Sharp, JavaScript, or if you're coming from you know Game Maker, um, it's a very similar topic, uh, very similar syntax where square brackets uh, represent arrays. We can then start to put things inside of here, one, two, three, four, and they're separated by comma. Now basically what we have here, and you'll see the real time compiler is showing us this, we have an array containing the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, we can Then we can index and basically use this data, we can say uh, var team1 equals teams1, and you'll see in our real time compiler here that we've successfully plucked out the number 1 index. Now remembering that arrays start from 0 and uh, count their way up, so team number 1 is actually going to be the second item. If we were to say team 0, and we rename that variable, team 0, you'll see we've successfully plucked out the first item. Now a practical example of something that we could use this for. I've selected teams here so we can actually say, we can give these teams names, so we can say if we're doing something like games, again we would say heroes, um, we might say monsters, if we, this is you know an instance of a multiplayer game, we might say uh, seekers, another, another type of team, the red team and the blue team, we'll just do some basic, some basic teams. Now if we wanted to do some, uh, if we wanted to loop through these, we could then use a you could use a while loop, but we're going to use a for loop. Um, these loops follow standard syntax. So I'm just going to say for, uh, we're going to give a name. So I'm going to say for team in teams. And what this means is the, the name team here is going to represent the, the team that we're looking at inside of teams. So basically a for loop will count from zero all the way to the end of the array. And each time team is going to represent the value that we're looking at. So if I were to say print ln, that's just a, a C command to print out to the console. And I put team inside of that. And we look at our console, you'll see heroes, monsters, seekers, red and blue. And this is the basics of how we start to use uh, arrays inside of Swift. This, Like I said, this does follow practice and follow suit with pretty much every other language or modern language out there. Uh, but this this is the basis of how we would use a for loop and an array. The other kind of for loop we have is your more traditional for var i equals zero. Now I'm just saying i equals zero because I'm saying i I'm going to use i for the for a shortened version of index. Then we just say well i is less than say three. It's going to be our second command, and I'm just going to say plus plus i. Now plus plus i basically means we start at zero, while i is less than three. So this is our condition. So we're starting at zero. So i is zero. While i is less than three, we're going to execute this chunk of code in here, and then we're going to say i plus plus, which then moves our index up to one. i is still therefore less than three, so this chunk of code will execute again, and i will be incremented to two. Uh, we're still less than three, and basically this function will keep repeating itself. So now we can do the same thing here, we can say print ln, and if I put the word team, oh sorry, teams, because that's our array at the top here, and then the square brackets, and then the number, the letter i, which is basically suggesting that we're now looking into this array at the index of 0 first, so we'll get heroes, then it will be 1, monsters, 2, seekers, 3, red. And what I'll do is I'll just comment out this one here so you can see that, and if we look at our If we look at our console output, you will basically see heroes, monsters, and seekers. So these are 
1, 2, and 3. Uh, this is the basics of how we would use the traditional style of for loop. Now there are other kinds of loops like uh, while loops, so we could say you could use a, a while loop or you could use a for in loop, but these are beyond the scope of this video and most commonly you won't, you, you probably won't end up using a while loop or a for in loop as most of the time, at least this is what I've found, but most of the time uh, when I'm working I usually uh, end up using a for each statement like this or a traditional for statement like this. So once again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, the next video will most likely be on conditional statements. So that's going to be our if and our switch type of statements and uh, maybe some other types of statements like that. And then we'll be moving on to functions, classes and basic inheritance. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.